now we can talk about um, cycling safety because at the weekend I had a bit of a shocker, um, which I've talked about on social media and it sort of snowballed a little bit and there's been lots of interest in it. Um, I was out on a bicycle ride with my husband and my youngest, who's just turned five last mm -hmm. month, and um, she lost control of her bike um, just at the exact point where the cycle lane, which we were on, uh, was intersected by a road and the exact point that she careered into the road screaming, um, a white van was accelerating towards the junction and hadn't seen her. So, I mean, it was sort of time stood still. Um, I was pretty sure I was about to witness the worst imaginable thing. Um, and I was also convinced that the, the driver was about to see her. And, um, and then I started to think, well, it's not happening. It, I mean, it was just a horrible, horrible few moments. I'm very pleased to say my very quick thinking husband who was behind us I don't know how, to this day I don't know how, um, threw, he was on a bike as well, threw his bike to one side, managed to jump across in front of the van, which obviously drew attention to the situation, um, because Poppy was low level, so the van may not have seen her, and managed to push Poppy out of the way and, and missed her by about this much. So as you can imagine... An upsetting experience, and mm. it's taken me a little while to calm down after all of that, but it's really made us think, you know, should we be talking more about cycling safety? Um, and we do have a guest to talk about that this morning, Emily Cherry. She's Chief Executive of Bikeability Trust. And I suppose the temptation, Hello, good morning to you, after something like this, is not to take your kid out again, because you're putting them in harm's way. But we are avid, keen cyclists. We love to go out as a family. We will go out again. Um, but are there ways to make sure that we can do that safely? Yeah, there absolutely are. So, I mean, firstly, thank you for sharing your experience, and I hope you and okay. We have to admit, your husband is a hero. So, you know, absolutely, I Liam really is a hero. think he was. I, th I actually think the story would have been very different if he hadn't have done what he he's an experienced cyclist. He lived in Amsterdam for a while. I don't honestly know how he did it, um, and I pay tribute to him if he's watching. Thank you so much because. Um, yeah, he saved, he saved the day. But I think that's one of the keys that you've then said there is because he's an experienced cyclist mm -hmm. and he is used to the rules of the road. And actually, there are lots of positives about what you did as, as parents because you were cycling behind Poppy, so that's one of our top tips. So if you're cycling with young children on the road, go behind, shepherd them so that you can respond and identify mm -hmm. hazards that are coming up around them. So there was lots of good things that, that you did. And we want more children and parents to get out there cycling. We've got four really key top tips that I really okay. hope all of your listeners are able to hear. So, and, uh, we will, they're, they're there for training. We do children and families training. We do adults. We do all sorts of training, and, and we'll train everyone to cycle safely. So the four tips are observation. So am I aware of everything that's going on around me? All of the hazards are front and about. Mm. The second one is positioning. This is really important, where you put yourself on the road. So not cycling in the gutter, if you're sharing the road space, but um, in the middle of the lane when it's safe to do so, or, uh, or about 60 centimetres out, because that forces traffic to stop, forces traffic to come around you and leave critically the 1.5 metres for a car so to if you're overtake. a parent, when we're on the roads with little ones, and we try to avoid the roads as much as possible, but I'll always be just a little bit out past my little ones to, to actually almost be protective so that if a car does go too close they're too close to me and there's that extra cushion yeah, yeah. and that's them. absolutely perfect you see so I, I think tip. emily it is difficult enough being yeah, she on is, an her, open <laughs> road or you know when, when when you came to an open road to worry about keeping yourself on a bike to worry about the um, the surface that you're mm -hmm. you're on as well there's so many things that you cannot control um, what the weather's like and um, the traffic that we're talking about around you as well. So being with children, looking after yourself and having to worry about physically looking after some kids around you is a big ask. Mm -hmm. It, it is, and that's why those top tips are really important. So, you know, you talk about road services, you know, potholes. Um, yeah. there's, there's a lot of those around at the moment. Or so bicycle lanes being intersected with roads. I mean, there's no way around that. You obviously have to have roads, but that was problematic for us because, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we had to keep stopping and starting and... She wasn't able to stop on that occasion. Yeah. And that's where our other two top tips are okay. really important as well. So in terms of priorities, so knowing who has priority on which, um, which part of the road as well, um, and on communication. So, you know, what you did was uh, communicate with those other road users. Let's also not forget there's been some significant changes to the highway code that are about protecting cyclists, walkers and all pedestrians. So the highway code now to it has a hierarchy of road users, meaning that the people with the most potential to harm mm. have the greatest responsibility to protect. So here in this case, it was the van driver. Um, and that's really important that we have all got to behave responsibly, share the road space um, and uh, just really make sure that everyone can enjoy walking and cycling. It's